Uh, my name is uh, Mike Dorian. I'm uh, originally from Red Deer, Alberta, but I've uh, been living in Calgary, Alberta for the last uh, 20 or so years. And uh, I run a business called Living Soil Solutions in Calgary, Alberta. And it's based on soil health stuff, teaching people about soil and the basics of soil and, and the intricacies of soil, but also with services uh, and products in the background um, that are all natural and focusing on regenerative sides bits of soil. So. Okay, when did you start Living Soil Solutions? I started Living Soil Solutions back in 2012, um, shortly after I took my uh, PDC with uh, Verge Permaculture in 2011. So tell me about the different products and services that you offer. Yeah, so Living Soil Solutions has kind of a couple ways that they can help people. Uh, we have a multi-prong attack. So one is we do education, whether that's workshops or presentations, and try to give people the knowledge and confidence to, to work with their soil. The other one is we provide products like worm castings, uh, humic acids, granular humates, mycorrhizal fungi products that, that uh, can give the person the proper tools to, to do the right things in their yards. And then the last one is if they don't have the time or, or the the know-how, then we can come in and provide these services, doing uh, compost tea applications in their yards, uh, deep root fertilizers uh, for their trees, and uh, top dressing of other products and stuff to build up the organic matter and structure in their soil. Tell me the, about the importance of compost. So the importance of compost, um, it's, it's another one of these things where one, you want to be looking to make sure that you actually have good compost, first of all. So you want to make sure that there's life in it and it's got to be aerobic. But when we're putting that compost to use, we're getting those microbes, we're bringing those microbes back to the soil, but we're also in starting to increase our organic matter. And, and that's going to give our soil a bit more tilth so that the roots can grow a bit deeper and we can get better structure. And then we have this whole ecosystem that works really well in the soil. Can you tell me about what makes a good ecosystem in the soil versus a bad one? Yeah, so if we look at what a good ecosystem would look like in the soil, um, think about us as people. So we need a few things to survive as a species. We need oxygen, we need water, we need shelter, and we need food. Well, those guys in the soil need that same thing. So if we can provide those and make sure that we've got good airflow, it's not super compacted, moisture can run through the system, not just shed off and run off to the side. We've got organic matter for the or organisms to kind of uh, like condos and hotels to hide out in and live in, but also be able to provide them a food source. And then plants and roots in that soil growing so that they can have this symbiotic relationship and share sugars for nutrients and water. So what is organic matter? Organic matter is essentially broken down um, plant residues and, and uh, other, or, or other things that even come through animals or ourselves. So. A lot of the times in our gardens, we can use compost um, or we could use uh, leaves or straw or that kind of stuff to, to top dress our, our beds. Um, in larger frames of mind, we've got uh, animals integrated into the system. So they're eating th that, uh, that grass material and then they're pooping and defecating that stuff out. So they're starting to build the organic matter more, I guess, more natural way. What is the current state of our soils right now? if we look at it on a kind of agronomic perspective. Right. So if we look at the current state of our soils right now, they're not in the best of shape. If we look at how we've been kind of running large scale agriculture, or just even what your everyday backyard warrior is gonna be doing with their yard, they're focused on pretty much making their green grass or they're a commodity farmer trying to get out as much bang for their buck out of their soils as possible so that they can ship some product overseas or sell it to somebody for ethanol or something like that. But if we start looking at more practices that are focusing on sustainable agriculture, regenerative agriculture, that instead of just taking everything that we can from those soils, which are getting to their last limits, then we can start to build on these and make it... Uh, something that's growing and growing with into the future. So I've heard that there's only 60 harvests left on planet Earth. Can you speak to that? So they talk about that there's only 60 harvests left on planet Earth. Now, what they're trying to showcase there is if we continue with how we're running conventional agriculture right now, we're going to be left with dirt. 
and you can't really grow anything that's going to be put into somebody's body and do them any justice if we've got dirt. We need to grow on soil. And these are just kind of these slaps in the face of like, okay, we need to start making some changes and doing some different things out there and looking back on how agriculture used to be done, previous industrial revolution stuff, and how we can use technology and, and different methods to speed fast that stuff again. So what's the difference between dirt and soil? So dirt is essentially dead. There's nothing to it. Okay, we could take a seed and we could plant it in there. Maybe that seed might grow, but mainly just from the energy of the seed itself. Then it's going to need a lot of help, a lot of outside inputs. So you're going to be putting a lot of time and effort and resources into this to try to make something grow. Where we look at soil, on the other hand, it's super alive. There's millions and millions of stuff going on in super healthy soil. And they're doing all those jobs to make those plants grow. They've had this relationship way before we came around. So instead of us trying to take those jobs over, harbor them, keep them content, feed them, support them, and then they're going to help work with the plants to take care of that. So soil is alive, dirt is dead. And so how does compost and compost tea bring life back to the dirt? So compost and compost tea bring life back to the dirt by we're, we're essentially being mad scientists and and speed fasting what would happen in a forest essentially so you're taking all this organic matter you're mixing it together you're breaking it down you're supporting these organisms to break down that material and become compost which then we can put back onto the land or we can put it into a liquid solution like a compost tea and now we're taking all those organisms and putting them back into that dead dirt and hopefully giving them a support system to start to live and thrive and turn that dirt to soil so it's Think of it like adding probiotics to your soil and a multivitamin to your soil, like we would take uh, in yogurts and different fermented foods for our own microbiome. So how long does it take to, to convert from a dead system to a, a system that's alive? So how long does it take to, to take a dead system to a, an alive system, so our dead dirt to, uh, to living soil? Now, looking at... Um, just some of the research that's been going on and, and different uh, um, larger scale teachers and mentors that are doing some of this like Elaine Ingham or Jill Clapperton. Now these ladies are taking anywhere from you know two to five years taking a system that's really dependent on our our synthetic and, and um, um, commercial outputs like that but they're able to turn that stuff around and make it more of a natural system where it's building that soil instead of just constantly taking away. So, I mean, you're, in some ways, would you say that you're a bit of ahead of the curve in terms of like what you're doing and when you got started? Yeah, so people would say maybe I'm a bit ahead of the curve. Uh, I think because when I did start the process that I did with Living Soil Solutions, there wasn't a whole lot going out there. There was some of these teachers like Elaine Ingham and, and she was out teaching people around the world. But I think a lot of these concepts are slow to grasp um, especially in the larger agriculture side of things because farmers want a solution and they want it now but these kinds of things take time and so as more research comes out and people get a bit more desperate then they start looking for different tools to put on their tool belt to help solve their problems and these are tools that should be on everybody's tool belt so I think we were a little bit ahead of the, the curve but it came down to all the teaching and educating and if if that wasn't part of the problem, then we'd never be able to, to make it as far as we have in this business so far. So what is the hardest being, part being? The hardest part of this business, I think, would be just the fact that you're, you're teaching people, but that's part of selling what you're trying to do and accomplish as well. So you have to fully make them educated on exactly what you're trying to do and what uh, that long-term results are going to be for the planet, for ourselves. And and everything else in the ecosystem. Do you think that the future for businesses like yours within the field of living soil um, is, looks promising? I would say the future for businesses like mine, uh, Living Soil Solutions, I, I think there's a huge opportunity. There's, there, there could be 10 or 12 of me just in the city of Calgary easily. There's a lot of people here. There's a lot of properties. There's a lot of areas. Um, you know, community gardens are growing. Golf courses and athletic fields are looking at different things. 
and just the amount of people that are looking at growing more and more food in their backyards. And farmers are getting sick of doing stuff too, and they're going to need specific or people that are tight with them to work with them from hold their hand from the beginning to, to that whole transition period beyond. So I think there's tons of opportunity in this industry for sure. Have you had anybody come and ask you if they could mentor on any of you? Have I had anybody come and ask about mentoring under me? Yeah, a few times now. Um, so that's pretty flattering. Um, you know, and you sit with them, you have a couple a couple drinks or a warm beverage and, and uh, you try to go over as much information as you can. And, uh, and there's a few people that I still stay in contact with and we chat, you know, every couple months kind of thing. And or if they pop into town, they'll sit me down and kind of pick my brain and catch themselves up where they need to. And and uh, yeah, it's it's an interesting world, and I'm I'm glad to pass on the information as as I learn it as well. What are you most excited about with uh, with your business and kind of where things are going? <sighs> what am I most excited about with Living Soul right now and where it's going? I think the fact that I've I've kind of stayed at this certain level for the last like, you know, six to seven years and, you know, just keeping it steady. But now we're getting to the point where we're really starting to make some inroads. So we're going to have this huge spike and be able to make that much more um, effect and, and, and cause out there. And, uh, you know, I've got some buddies that I've brought into the business too. So I'm now working with more people. So you're not just by yourself in the field or, or in someone's backyard. So that's a lot that's pretty exciting too and and just the fact that people are really starting to ask some intelligent questions so I think with with the consumer getting more educated uh, it's gonna make this kind of stuff go a lot faster awesome so you guys have started a farm you want to tell me a little bit about that yeah so me and a few colleagues uh, ended up winning this bid for an urban agriculture pilot program with the city of Calgary and it uh, they've given us essentially 15 acres of land to work with and the three pillars that they want to base around is brownfield uh, uh, restoration or rejuvenation, uh, growing food and building community. So with how things are right now in the world, it's, uh, you know, the community bit has been slowed down a little bit, but that's just going to make us fight a little harder for it and get it back to where we need to. And, and it's going to be a huge hub showcase of what can be done for urban ag in the city of Calgary or or even in Western Canada or Canada itself. And um, we want to showcase what can be grown and how it can be grown and just bring people together over food and, and those basic things that we need as humans again. And uh, who are the other partners with that? So the other partners with that are um, uh, Jeremy Zoller. I, with, I was thinking about the, you're oh, the compost. Right, right, right. Account. So the other partners that were tied in with uh, Highfield Farm, this pilot program. So obviously one is the city of Calgary. And uh, the other one we tied to a non-profit, uh, the, the Compost Council of Canada, which I've been a member with for the last little while. Awesome. Any closing thoughts? Any closing thoughts? Well, you know, with all the things that are going on these days, I think if you want to take a load off, like play in your garden. And even if it's just planting one plant in a, in a little container, you know, get your kids interested in it. Because if we start to lose that kind of connection, uh, we're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> so let's try to keep that stuff connected. And I always keep it corny. So remember, it always starts in the soil. And so where can people find you? People can find me at uh, livingsoil.ca or we're on Facebook at Living Soil Solutions, uh, YouTube Living Soil Solutions, and Instagram and Twitter at Living Soil Solutions. Or sorry, the Twitter is uh, Soil Mike at Soil Mac, and they all the rest are at Living Soil Solutions.